about 207. Do you know that one? You can teach us. In heavenly armor we'll enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. When the power of darkness comes in like a flood, the battle belongs to the Lord. He'll raise up a standard, the power of his blood. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, presses him hard do not fear the battle belongs to the Lord take courage my friend your redemption is near the battle belongs to the Lord and we sing glory honor power and strength to the Lord we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, time in the word this last week mainly 2 Kings chapter 1 where King Ahaziah uh, was sick and uh, he inquired of Baal um, what would happen and Elijah comes along when these messengers going off to to inquire of of Baal and uh, and he says to them forget it you know, the king's going to die. That's essentially the message. And so they go back to the king and say, hey, you're back quickly. Uh, how come? You know, and uh, he said, well, we met this great hairy man <laughs> along the way. <laughs> Clothed on and a belt around him. And a be- leather belt around him. And he said, that was Elijah. That's the I'm going to send 50 soldiers with a captain to go <laughs> to speak to him. <laughs> And, uh, and they say, O oh, man of God. He says, well, if I'm a man of God, fire will come down to heaven. And consume you. And consume you. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, like, come down, O oh, man of God. And he said, no. No, he was on a mountain. So, so then... Um, the second what? man They send another lot. <laughs> and and it happened again. I think the third one came along one and said, ah, uh, let's talk. Let's, let's, have a, let's have a bit of a chat about this. <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking there, you know, that, that, that the key message was that he was a king that was going to uh, really no, just God. <laughs> just mm. just say to God, I don't believe you, mm. but I'll go to these pagan gods. That, that Elijah had just shown were, were not very much <laughs> of an effect Carmel. on the Mount Carmel. Yeah. <laughs> so so it, it went away. But there are some people today that that when they look at that, they say, oh, Jesus would never do that. Oh, it's all love, that love and peace, and there's no anger. That's it. There's no justice. Everybody goes to heaven because God is a God of love. They don't know the gospel fully because part of the gospel is the judgment that will come. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, Ahaziah, that is true, seeing what had happened at Mount Carmel, so it wasn't like God was 
um, judging sort of just because he's having a bad day. No. It's like, wait a minute, Ahaziah, you've seen this, you've seen what happened with your dad and your mum, <laughs> and yet you still don't have to bow? Uh, hello? <laughs> yeah. Worshipping us, these false mm. gods. Yeah. 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 Sport. Yeah, sports, the big yeah, gods. Yeah, it is. It's the temple. We do. Yeah, you know. You know. On Sundays, it's so packed. Yes. Yeah. And Saturdays, people of Tom the Lord. Yeah. So no netting, but possibly football. On the peninsula. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it, it does have such an impact mm. on people, on families, pressure yeah. that your kids have got to be involved in sport and build their character. Mm. Yeah, build their yes. character. Find <laughs> better ways. Yeah. It builds character. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Mm. What yeah. kind of character do you want your child to have? And you get, you, get the, the parents out there swearing at them. I and swear it's no the longer kids. where, you know, if you lose, will you, you know, Take it graciously. Take it graciously because oh. that's not accepted now. No, that's you, you're, you know, that's just not on if you don't win. Mm. Yeah. Even, yeah, even the Christian family had that discussion once and I just walked away shaking my head. Oh, no, it's competitive. You think, hang on. There's a point where you just do things to play for the well, joy of it, yeah. and then there's a point when you take up the battle. It's and that's game. What the, exactly what I was trying to talk about with them. I think, well, look, it is a game ultimately that you're playing for fun, no matter the level of competitiveness. Yeah. You're there because you enjoy the game and, and enjoy being a part of that, not because mm. you're in it to win. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so this one, the battle belongs to the Lord, I was thinking. You know, mm. uh, Elijah could say, well, if I'm a man of God, fire will come down from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you know, Elijah didn't cause a fire. He didn't cause no, a fire. Did <laughs> <laughs> no, but... But then, where must have travelled back to the king and to the people that he was sending out? It's like, don't pick me, don't pick me. <laughs> I know you're going to already. I'm not going to that next round. <laughs> we get equal opportunity. Yeah. I don't want to be the next one. I'm the deserter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How yeah. about 111, Jesus is alive. Hmm. But also from that, there was the word that we've got Pentecost next week. Oh, uh, Pentecost yes. Sunday. And that's the only time that it coincides with the Jewish calendar, about mm-hmm. 50 days after Passover and that sort of thing. So, and, and there's a word that uh, endued with power. From, wait in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from an heart. And, and what do you think endued means? I had to look up the Greek. That's we don't use that word, do we? No. And, uh, and the, so when you look up the Greek, it says uh, to, to sink into your clothes. <laughs> oh, so to be it's clothed. actually um, filled with it. You're yeah. filled with mm. you're, you're, like yeah, you're clothed, with it. clothed mm. with power from on high. Mm. And I thought, we need that these days. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know, we've got so many ideas of men. And, mm. and, and lots of people will talk about revival. And lots of people say, oh, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But in some respects, People want to control the Holy Spirit, a bit like Simon the yeah. Sorcerer. Instead of let's wait on God and let Him clothe us, and then be ready to do what He says. When He says, "Go here, go there," we'll know we'll have the power. Mm-hmm. Instead of right, I've got this issue. I need the power right now, so we can get rid of that. But it's detract. Yeah. It's not working with it's not God. It's yeah. Being That's it's yeah. like this coronavirus, for example. They're opening up um, England again. Uh, you can have flights to England, wow. but you'll be yeah. uh, knocked out and you'll have to lock down for 14, yeah. 14 days. And, so what's the point? Then, oh, yeah. them up when you can't go. Well, <laughs> well but, but the thing is, this uh, uh, I'm thinking about how the, the power of God moved mm. upon Philip, mm. and he was mm. transported. <laughs> Oh, I know. Yes. 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 So he, he didn't have to go. <laughs> through, he, he didn't have to order an airplane ticket. He didn't have to go through customs. He didn't have to wait on. No. He didn't have to have these these people telling him exactly. Well, you can't do that. He said, mm-hmm. Well, I, I didn't arrange this. Mm. I was lifted up, taken to this guy, so that he could hear mm. and have yeah. the gospel explained to him. Yes, yeah. the Lord wants to take us to England that way, we'd want to do No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> to be here one minute and somewhere else the next. Yeah. Oh. Well, I imagine that's going to be like, be like heaven, really. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right. You're going to be obeying what God wants you to do, not saying, <clears throat> yeah. 
and there will be a new heaven and a new earth, new mm. means of travel. Yeah. Our will become melded with his will. Yes. There won't be yes. anything that we will want that will be against his will. No, yes. that's, that's right. Just yes. So how could Jesus basically appear suddenly with the disciples mm. after his resurrection? Mm. Mm. And uh, yeah. they're, they're sort of freaking out a little bit because, um, you know, what, how would you get here, Lord? Mm. Yeah. Just comes through walls. Yes. <laughs> Mary Magdalene was the first one that saw him yeah. after yeah. his resurrection. Yeah. It disappears. They might be like being transported with the beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty. Yeah. 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 Even better than that, though, yeah. because he'll be in. Yeah. He won't be the force that'll be doing it. It'll be the yeah. God purpose. And things we don't know yet. Yeah. But I'm oh, willing to find so out. Much. It's so exciting to have a faith in God. Yeah. No. It's yeah. wonderful. What was it, 111? 111. Jesus mm. is alive. <coughs> Jesus, Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Jesus Actually, it'd be better if someone else started off, I think. <laughs> His is the blood that ransomed me. His is the power that keeps me free. His risen life is given to me. For Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. His is the blood that ransomed me. His is the power that keeps me free. His risen life is given to me. For Jesus is alive. And there must be one in there that, that you know. <laughs> I know 112. 112? Well, the way though. <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah, I know whom I have believed. Yeah. <coughs> I know not what my God's, God's wondrous grace to me He hath made known. Nor why I'm worthy, Christ in love redeemed me for His own. But I know who I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. I know not how this saving faith to me he did impart. Nor how believing in his word brought peace within my heart. But I know who I have believed, and I persuaded that he is able to keep that which I permitted. Unto him against that day. I know not how the Spirit moves, convincing us of sin, revealing Jesus through the Word, creating faith in him. To him against that day, I know not what a good or ill may be reserved for me. Of weary ways or golden 
golden days before his face I see. But I know who I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. I know not when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor if I walk the veil with him or meet him in the but I know who I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. Hey, we've been looking at the songs as to how true they are to what we sing. Mm. Now, just looking at this one, um, thinking about the second verse, it says, I know not how this saving faith to me he did impart. But Romans 10 verse 17 says, Faith comes from hearing, mm. and hearing well, by so the word of God. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And and anyway, you know, that's why we preach the gospel, so that we've got no... It's like the gospel rolls the, rolls the stone away so that mm. Jesus can speak into their heart. <laughs> we don't save them, but we roll the stone away. Yeah. So I don't know about that. And and the <laughs> I know not what a good or ill may be reserved for me. I don't know. We've got a pretty good hope. We do. What's reserved for us? I suppose so in that one, it's like you don't know what lies ahead. We don't. The troubles, trials, yeah. tribulations, the good times, the bad times. Um, that are reserved for you. It's not for anybody else, but the things yeah. that you personally can walk through. Yeah. Um, and like but we've got like a blessed hope and an yeah. anchor for the soul. Yes. But, and I think it's where the chorus comes in and says, but I know whom I have believed. Yeah, yeah. And I'm persuaded that he's able. So, you know, there can be that sort of um, shakiness sometimes can happen when you're faced with immense difficulties. Mm. But then to come back through... <laughs> And yeah. say, but I that, know. That being said, these songs are written by man. That's wrong. So it's always yeah. going to be. Always going to be something. That's right. Yeah. 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 Yes. And that's me. Mm. You also have to look. Is what you're singing script, scripturally, theologically sound? Mm. Sound, because that affects what we sing affects our doctrine. Lewis had a good idea this morning. So, uh, <laughs> do you want to say that was? No, no, no. You go ahead, because. Yeah. It's it. a thought that, um, you know, uh, to be able to look at the songs and then look at the doctrine that's behind it, now, that can be a very difficult part because there are sometimes people disagree about the songs that are sung. Yeah. But they, it's become so much a part of their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That, mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, it's no, they can't. Vary. It's just something. It, they can't be wrong because I've been singing this for all my life. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and it means so much to me. Yeah, but subconsciously, it reinforces what they, yeah, yeah. by singing those words. It is sinking into your spirit, your subconscious, and, mm-hmm. and affecting where you stand and, and the, yeah, your faith, your attitudes, your, mm. yeah. your bias. Oh. Mm. The, the, yeah. the hymns and songs that are straight from scripture, the most, you know, mm. they're learning mm-hmm. some of them, you know, that, that, you know, come straight from the psalm or... Well, David spent his time, yeah. it was the latter part of his life, writing songs. organising yeah. the choirs and the psalms and the yeah. praises that would be given to God. And, um, mm. yeah. Yeah, so. Yes, that's a thought that we're looking at. And uh, it, it's not a very easy one to go through. No. Mm. We get attached. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So what's been the big takeaway you've had from this week? Megan? 
I'm not saying anything. <laughs> well, with your job. Oh, oh that was awesome, I think. Yeah. But, but also what you, you've done with it. Mm. It's good luck. Yeah. Mm. It wasn't so comfortable. No. Mm. It wasn't a comfortable thing, you know, to say, you know, I'm not, not going to work this weekend. Because you know, uh, Friday, I didn't even get a lunch break. We worked mm. straight through from 10 till about 3.30. For the first hour, we had a meeting um, via video link with the big boss. Um, but from, yeah, so technically we probably started about 11 o'clock and then worked through till about 3.30, no break or anything. So, yeah, I mean, you've got to stand your ground, I suppose. Yeah, mm. take some lunch and say, well, I know, but mm. I, I need to have and that. The same to me, oh, yeah. And the same to me, oh, you... You need to tell her you want to stop for a break. Uh, is she uh, supervising? She should know the oh, act and oh, what you're... Um, yeah. when, uh, WHS, that mm. you're, entitled, you're entitled to break, but then it's like they should also be able to let you know when's the appropriate time to take a break. Because I'm like technically only supposed to be doing 15 hours. Mm. That's the benchmark. And I've already done about 10 yeah. This past week, I only started on a stay. Over two days, you got Over two hours. days, I did about 10 hours. Yeah. thing to check, Megan, would be to find out if you're getting paid for those training days. So it might be extra. No, it's like, not. It's not. It's still the standard. It's still the standard mm. rate. Hmm. So that's something to learn from this week, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. And, and what sort of training they're doing. And that's a bit yeah. quicker. It should be, once she gets quicker at doing it, then it should be that. Yeah, but that's not the point. The point, point is... Pass down, because you should get quicker. You should have a copy of your contract and the terms of that. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. Did yeah. you get it down on there? It's on... Um, oh, well, if you haven't get it down, um, I'll catch up with you sometimes. Yeah. Tomorrow, if you... Let Beck take it down. And I don't know where to find it. Anywhere. Yeah. Find yeah. It. Get it on the USB and we'll make sure. Yeah, and... Yeah, you, you, oh, yeah I was, one thing you should probably know what I'm talking about when I say this, that you know, we're looking last night, so what really, what can we find is in mm. reading the Bible book? And I was looking at the body of the church once again, the passion of 1 Corinthians 12. Yeah. And, um, you know, the body is a unit and it's made up of many parts. And I was thinking of myself as a part in a mm. church. And, um, and I was feeling a bit useless, if you know what I mean. And the eye cannot, cannot in verse 21 of the, chapter 12, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Mm. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And that will come to How me. Right. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. is so yeah. encouraging, that is mm. word. Yeah. 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 That's the power of the living word. Mm. Yeah. That's Doesn't have to speak to each of us? Yeah. That made me feel good. It does. Yeah. The word yeah. comes, yeah, quicker. But the yeah. good part is that once you come into that realisation, mm. the Lord can exalt those mm -hmm. yeah. to bring... Cause, uh, he's shown me that before, another time mm. on something else, and he yeah. said, no, yeah. the, the, the lower, you know, becomes greater, you know, that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. I was yeah. shown something once before on the same, because yeah. I've often been not. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's the same as the Ethiopian eunuch. They wouldn't... Have, he'd just been to Jerusalem. And uh, consequently, he was going back, but he didn't understand. Nobody opened the word to him in Jerusalem. He get all the learned people around, but God saw him and provided for him. Yeah, yeah, by yeah. special transport. Yeah, we love that one. Yeah, yeah. Philip Lyon. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love verses about 25, 25 there. And uh, for our coming parts there's no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honour to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one yes. for another. Yes. yes. No schism. And yeah. what have they created? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's not how... Mm -hmm. 
Because the other thing was yeah, waiting on the board, of course. Yes. Yes, yes we were also looking at 2 Peter chapter 3. Was, you know, waiting the Lord because the Lord's timing is not the same as ours, yes. <laughs> particularly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the, mm-hmm. with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Yes. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And of course, that last part. Moves where we mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. found with, with Dad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and people say, well, if God wants it, then it must be that he's going to make it that way. That's but no, he's already provided yeah. that way through sending his yeah. son. Yeah, he, yeah. he showed the world so much that he, he, he loved the world so much that he gave his son. Yeah, one and, only yeah. son. And, uh, and so uh, he's already shown that he wants the world to come to repentance mm-hmm. by sending mm-hmm. Jesus. And if the world turns its back on it like a... Like a oh, like uh, Hazai did. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Ahaziah. <laughs> yeah. You know, God won't wrestle with people continuously. No. no. But he his, does wrestle. His spirit will not... Um, <laughs> what's the word? Strive with man forever. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was thinking too, you know, about the fire coming down mm-hmm. on those. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true. I think about the fire coming down at Pentecost. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Gosh, I wish I was there. Oh. Had been there. Yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I can't even imagine. No. Huge yeah. movie. And then you think how much the church has enlarged that day and how did they manage all those people? I was just thinking on yeah. that this morning. Like, you know, you didn't have COVID or anything, but like 3,000 added to church. How did they, you had 12 apostles, or you had the 70 that were busy fighting in the upper room. All of a sudden, you got a job in your hand. 120, that's yeah. right. 120. You're just doing mass baptism. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't have mass. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have mass. <laughs> but 120 <laughs> to look after 3,000. Mm-hmm. That's, but, and oh, that's men and women, yeah. you know, that, that were waiting. I mean, and then five thousand. Yeah. Mm. A few days later. Yeah. It? That's rapid growth. Oh, yeah. that's, that's and then you got problems growth. as soon as yeah. there's rapid growth. Oh yes. Because Acts chapter six is they all complaining, you know, the Greek women are not looking after, not being looked after as well as the others. So you got all suddenly you've got all problems, and then the way they solved it was to appoint that deacons. Is. Yeah. Stephen, yeah. mm-hmm. he could have said, "Well, um, you know." No, I'm I'm going to take over from Peter. I'm Peter in training. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he accepted the post of deacon. Yeah, and they did. And first martyr. Mm-hmm. And that set the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, God's good. Yeah. Yeah. But he's building his church, mm-hmm. and uh, we're finding. Uh, I, I speak to people. I think of Robbie Goodfellow, we're, we're actually sharing uh, with with him and, and some of the things he comes out with now, it's really precious mm. how God is building his church. And we're, with connections across those that God is calling out uh, that he's uh, wanting to relate together. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You got another song up? No, I'm just trying to... Oh, have you got, have you got yes, one you that better. you could sing? Yeah, one you know. And after this one, we'll get into the word. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about the word. I had one word prepared. I had it prepared during the week. Um, how um, you know, the price... I was going to play another song, uh, The Price of Coal. Oh, wow. yeah. And um, yeah, I must have to do that next week. Right. But, mm-hmm. but then... I was looking at at uh, a whole thing that God's been giving us over the last two days. Mm. We'll follow you. Part the good part. Two twenty three. Two twenty three. I know some people do a different tune. Yeah. You choose a tune. Oh, you might not. That's right. Don't worry, we'll just listen right. to you. We'll just listen. Christ with all my might, Christ is thy strength and Christ thy right. Lay hold on my bandage, 
shall be Thy joy and crown eternally Run the straight race through God's good grace Lift up thine eyes and seek his face Life with its way before us lies Christ is the path and Christ the prize Have scare aside upon thy guide Lean and his mercy will provide Lean and the trusting soul shall prove Christ is its life and Christ its love Faint not nor fear, his arms are near He changes not and thou art dear Only believe and thou shalt see That Christ is all in all to thee he changes not. Amen. <laughs> he certainly does. I like that. Changes <laughs> not. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we're starting at Tuesdays this week. We've got a few people. We're, two places we'll go to, and we've left it up to people to decide which one they go to. And, uh, and we phoned Roger McCauley. He said, Oh, I don't know whether I can make that decision. I like to be told where to go. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Roger. He's so funny. He is. He says, well, I said, Roger, don't worry. I've been told where to go many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's good. The, the people have been wanting to get back together. So, and mm. that's precious. Mm. Right. Creative for that. Yeah. 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 Oh, I like Trump. Trump's got the churches going back together. It's mm. considered an essential service. Yes, yes. it is. And it is. Oh, it is. Oh. If so, you can play football, they're you know, letting the sports they're looking at, aren't they? I mean, hmm. is that really... <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, look, we'll come around uh, the, the word now, if that's all right. Uh, now, I found a, something that we had in 1993 when we went over to... Uh, to Alabama, to and uh, yeah. and on the on the title of the church, Corona Holiness Church, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thought they need to change that name. So uh, yeah. Ruth uh, gave the idea, well, Corona Free Holiness Church. <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh, it was a lovely group. That I mean, yeah. I mean uh, after the meeting, they they would have fellowship time. Yeah. And uh, they would go around to uh, Ryan's, five dollars all you can eat, type thing, oh, and oh, some, of the, some, some of the. But there were also people there uh, that were um, uh, they were part of a group that not allowed, not allowed to watch TV. Oh. So they would go. No, this is not that group, Separate but we, we'd see them. We'd yeah. see them at Ryan's, and they would be all watching the TV. <laughs> Because the TV will be free, there are ways of getting around it. Yeah. And and then after we'd come back, and then they'd be singing. singing. Praise the mm. Lord, they knew how to sing. You guys oh. would have enjoyed it. You yeah. would have loved yeah, really yeah. yeah. the they, they, they had group. choirs, uh, oh, you know, yeah. in, in the group. Harmony. I'm thinking mm. of uh, Megan. You know, oh, yeah. Charles was had a gorgeous voice, didn't he, Charles? Yeah, Charles uh, he Thacker. Had a tenor. Mm. He's since died, too. Yeah, he died two years ago. Yeah. yeah. So. He's in his 80s, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I came across that. I was cleaning up my office and I thought, oh, that's yeah. uh, So today we're going to look at uh, Isaiah 35, but first of all, I need to give a bit of background to it because Isaiah 34 uh, really, you know, if you read Isaiah, 66 chapters, the 66 books in the Bible, mm. uh, but uh, also. Uh, with that, Isaiah 34 is like the judgment of the nations. It's a it's a huge sort of uh, panorama of what will happen to the nations, and uh, and it really is a, a time that we can take heart from that. And uh, so as we as we look at this, 
keep in mind that uh, just the previous chapter, I'll, I'll just read a couple of things. Um, where are we? Isaiah 30, I'll just go 34 for a little bit, pick out some of the things. Uh, Come ye nations to hear and hearken, let the earth hear, and all that is there, there in the world, and all that came, came forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all armies. He hath utterly destroyed them, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. It goes through, uh, verse 6, The sword of the Lord is filled with blood, it is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of lambs and goats, and with the fat of kidneys of rams. The Lord uh, hath the sacrifice in Bosna, goes on. And the days of, in verse 8, for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion, those that have stood against him, mm. and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land heated thereof, land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. Mm. This, is the, this is the judgment of God upon the nations. And, uh, and so if we just read Isaiah 35 without realising where it had come from, we would not understand what God is saying because this is the horror, this is the vengeance of the Lord. People don't like to talk about that. that like uh, People say, oh, you know, but God, will, God wants everyone to come to repentance so he'll find a way where they won't suffer this horrible thing that has already been outlined in Isaiah 34. And it's really an image of what's happening in Revelation in the end times, because for three and a half years, uh, the uh, the Antichrist will have that power, and there'll be many, many Christians that will have their heads chopped off, because they refuse to take the uh, mark of the beast on their hand or on their forehead, and uh, and that'll be real. But then they'll be under the under the uh, time where they'll be crying out to God uh, for when will you avenge us, O oh God? So it's just. I'll give you white garments, you'll stand still. You're, you're still safe now. You, they can't do any harm to you where you're at right now. But his judgment is coming upon the nations. Babylon and, uh, and all of those that have raised their fists and their hand against the living God. So on that backdrop in 34, we, we come to a very good place in uh, Isaiah 35. Um, would you you like to read that, Missy? The whole chapter. whole chapter, yeah, ten verses. Right. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice, even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The ex excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing, for in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of dragons, which each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the, the wayfaring man, though fool, shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up therein. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their head. They shall obtain joy and gladness, sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Yeah, I reckon in the light of Isaiah 34, and we look at Isaiah 35, that, that whole ten, 10 verses there, it, it's a really encouraging time because I was thinking of 
speaking of the, <coughs> the, the whole thing of strengthening ye the weak hands mm, yeah. and confirm the feeble knees. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and thinking about the knees that need hearing. And, and the, the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. You know, we think of um, the, this that time where the, the Jews, uh, after the at that time, they will come to a knowledge of Jesus, they, that they will look on him whom they have pierced, and they will see him. And the eyes that were blinded will see him with a reality that uh, is so, so, so saving, life-saving. And, uh, and it, it talks about, and a highway shall be there, and a way it shall be called the way of holiness. Now, I don't know about you, but holiness, what does that mean to, to us? Now, we, we hear a lot about, about holiness in one sense, because when you mention that sometimes, it's, it's a bit like, well, people know they ought to be holy, uh, but how do you get to that? What does it mean to be holy? And uh, we just looked at uh, uh, the, the facts of the scriptures lately. With how should we behave in the church of God? Uh, we are to be a holy people. You know, we are we're a peculiar people. We're a holy priesthood. What does that mean? How does that equate? To our understanding, and uh, and so when when we look at this, it's an important part for us to actually uh, come to that place of how to live a holy life. But it's come under attack, hasn't it? And anyone who who is seen to be holy is sort of seen to be holier than thou. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They come under attack, and they say, "Well, you're not really." Mm-hmm. You're not really practical. You, you, who can be really holy? And and this sort of thing. And, and what does it mean? But but it's a command. When I look at the scriptures, it uh, it, it stands out. One Peter one sixteen. Be ye holy, for I, the Lord, am holy. It isn't a suggestion. Well, look. You can be holy one day a week. The rest of the time, six days. Yeah, do whatever you like. Do whatever feels good. If it feels good, do it. Or, as the sign says up on the up on the thing around here uh, at the school, be your best self now. What does that say? (laughs) Be your best self. You know. What? How are you going to be your best self? Yeah. Is that the humanistic well, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Goal is That's it. Stuff. Where, where, where are you going to go with it? Mm. Um, so it, it's a very, very real thing that we look at here. And I, I look at look at the angels. We're going to be in company with angels. And Isaiah 6, 3, uh, it says, And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy mm. is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Glory. Holy, holy. Now they're singing that. Now we better get used to that tune and better understand what they're singing about because they obviously know what they're singing about. Mm -hmm. But we don't inquire of angels, we inquire of the Lord. Yes. We inquire of the Lord. What does it mean to be holy, Lord? What does it mean for us to, to come to this place? Now we see in this Isaiah 35 how God dealt with the nations, but he also dealt with his people, Israel. He mm. dealt with the, the, the Israelites at that point, and, uh, and he, he really just opened their eyes. Mm. You know, I think of um, with uh, John Newton, I once was blind, but now I see. Mm. Mm. Amazing grace. Yeah, mm. amazing sort of ability of God. Now, this, this highway of holiness... It's a picture that is so real. It's a highway. It's a. It shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. 
In other words, the unclean will be underneath. But there is a part where where you walk... Now, you notice it's one way. It isn't the highways of holiness. This is the highway of holiness. And it's all the talk that they've had. Oh, all those, all those oh, lead, lead to... to yeah. Yeah. Now, this highway is the way that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the yeah. life. Now, people... Uh, crucified him, uh, buried him, but he rose again from the dead. And he is a highway. It's a, we see the, we, we see the, 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 the uh, tracks that are used saying that Jesus is the bridge. Across that bridge we can be up into that place of, of uh, being in the presence of God. It's a highway. And it's a highway that means that uh, we no longer have the old ways that held us down. So the unclean un- in the world, there, uh, we've got the, the task of uh, declaring that there is a highway. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a real way. It's a way that Jesus showed us. It's the way that if we follow him, we shall not walk in the uncleanness and in the darkness of this world. Mm. We'll be able to move in that, in that powerful way of uh, knowing that we are going to be holy as he is holy mm. because we're going into the presence of God. Now, the, the, the beautiful part with this is that Jesus was made holy through the things that he suffered too. You know, we're doing Hebrews at the moment and uh, he, was, he was always holy. He never ever, could, never, ever sinned. Uh, but he was learned obedience through the things he suffered. So obedience is the thing that that creates that holiness. Disobedience creates sin. Disobedience is a turning away from God and fractures that that highway. It's like an earthquake that goes through a particular area and splits the ground where the cars would normally be able to travel on, but they can't any further. This is the way where God has provided for us. And uh, and so uh, Hebrews 12. We'll look at that now, staying for verse 10. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. This is about the fathers often corrected us because we needed correction. If we're going to grow up to be pleasing to our fathers, to our parents. But, you see, when God corrects us, it's to be preparing us for a holy life that will end up with eternity as our place of living in. See, the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. It's an everlasting, it's an everlasting joy. It's something that cannot be taken from us. And uh, they chastened us for their own pleasure, but he, for our profit, talking about God, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Mm. So it says, be holy as I am holy. So he makes us, he corrects us along the way so that we can be exactly what he wants us to be. It'll be uh, partakers of his holiness. What a privilege it is, isn't it? There are some areas where I look at the things that I knew in the past that I can see that God has He's taking us from faith to faith. He's taking us from a, a joyous understanding of His His salvation to a joyous understanding of His presence. And you value that presence more than anything. Now no chastening for the present time seems to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, after it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness and to them which are exercised thereby, lift up the hands that hang down. Hebrews chapter 10. It's the sa- Hebrews chapter 12. It's the same in echoes back in Isaiah 35. Lift up the hands that hang down. Remember in verse 3, strengthen the weak hands. In verse 3 of mm-hmm. Isaiah 35, strengthen the weak hands. And the feeble knees. That's Isaiah 35, verse 3 again. Confirm the feeble knees. 
In other words, rise up, straighten up. We've said to Colin often, didn't we, when he's been shuffling, straighten your back up. Really just stand up straight so you can take the steps necessary to get to where you want to be. And, uh, and that's it. So, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Okay? So along this path of highway of holiness is a means of having every part of your life strengthened so that there will be no one that will stumble, fall. That which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Now isn't that... This is Hebrews. The writer of Hebrews has made it very clear. Without holiness, you will not see the Lord. So it's important not to listen to the world that says, well, you think you're holier than now. No, you think that I don't understand what holiness is because holiness means a lot of correction. <laughs> holiness means that I'm going to be chastened by the Lord. If I think I'm, I'm, I'm someone when I'm not, then God will bring me, bring me down to a place yeah. where I will recognize that it doesn't honor him. It's not being... See, this is it. So many things in the world, are, 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 that they use oppression. I'm thinking of this Jacinda Ardern, New Zealander. Mm -hmm. She is using her power and authority to keep the people down. And Jesus said very simply that that's not the way that the, that the leaders of the church are to be. As he washed the disciples' feet and, and showed them how to be a, a, a servant, then and Peter says later on, and I've uh, I've copied down that scripture because it's it's brilliant really. In that he he really calls on the people of God to come to that place of uh, of honouring him. Not to treat the people as someone to be lorded over. Yeah, be a real shepherd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't lord it over. No. And we've well, got that many today. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And that's what's missing. There we are. So, having said that, you know, I, I've been very much wrestling yeah, with it is to, well, what actually does the holiness, how do we get it? That holiness that's sustained throughout every day throughout every moment of every day it says be ye holy it's not an option it's not, be ye holy for the lord am you can work hard at it you can say well i'm not i'm not going to i'm not going to do this today but you've got to know what what it is you're not going to do i can end up in a legal system that says um, well i obey that but I, at the end of the day i didn't obey that <laughs> So there, there is a place uh, where we need to actually understand how are we going to fulfil this area of our life. So, 1 John 1, verses 5 to 9. And hopefully this will help us today. It's certainly, as I've had to go through it, uh, uh, we, we look at so many things in the Word of God, don't we? So many things we, we have, it's every, every day, he speaks to us and we need to put it into action what he's speaking to us. But there are so many different things he's spoken about over the past year that to remember what was the last year ago, <laughs> it needs to be reminded. That's why Peter in his book says, in, in his epistle says, I've told you this many times but I'm going to keep on reminding you because I'm not going to be here soon because God's told me that I'm going to be dying soon so I want to make sure that you understand these things are so yeah. important for you to remember. Yeah. And, uh, and so 1 John 1, 5 to 9 This then is the message that we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness yeah. at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How does he cleanse us? See, that's the first part. The first part towards holiness is to have your sins cleansed. Mm -hmm. And to have them cleansed continually, again, we'll, we'll look at that in a minute because that part is where people lock into that place of saying, well, you were cleansed of your sins back then, so that's all you need to worry about. But no, it's not. You have to do it all the time. All the time. And the thing is that in Hebrews 9.14 it says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? In other words, this is put you on the highway. It's the beginning of the highway to be born again by his blood. Christ was offered to bear our sins, Hebrews 9.28, to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him, he shall appear the second time without sin and salvation. Now this is what I say. On the first part, this is the, the entrance into the highway. The entrance into the highway is to have your sins forgiven at that particular time, to have to be born again. You first you cleanse, verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see see the kingdom of God. In other words, you're on the highway and you can see the kingdom of God, but you're not there. Yeah. Yeah. You're not there. Mm. But you've got a you're on the highway. Now you you're told then to, to lift up the you know, the hands that have been uh, made feeble through sin through wrong ways of making decisions, through, through the, 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 the characteristics that you've developed over a period when you, you're walking before that time that you were born again. There are these things that are still with us. We take those first steps and, uh, and we, we move into this and we see that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from the past. This is where baptism also cleanses us from a guilty conscience. And we can walk along that highway freed up knowing that our past has been dealt with. In other words, you've been raised from an unclean area down below. You're, you're now on that highway of holiness. Yeah. You're on a highway that is, is taking you to a particular area. Now... You've got to know where you're going when you get on the highway, don't you? I mean, <laughs> we were in Houston. We were in America. We've been in England too where we've got on the... Uh, uh, oh, I missed a turn. <laughs> and you've got miles down the track. I was remembering my dad in Canberra. You've done that, you? I don't know what you're doing. You've got that tunnel, that tunnel. And our son, he said, Dad, do it again. So we went through it again for years. It was so funny. He thought it was, it was fun. Why? Oh, do it again. But there's nothing worse than when you're in a car and you, you, you're going off oh, and you that see the sign, bridge. getting this lane. GPS says get in this lane. Oh, and you find good. that you're in the wrong lane. Yeah. But the, get they've the told you. With the new road. Oh, oh, no, no, no. no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you get in there and then you think, oh no, I know what this is going to lead to. It's going to mean yeah. that I'm going to yeah. go, yeah. go miles down, down the track and back, and back yeah. again. So, so this, this highway, though, this highway, we have a helper along the way. Mm. And uh, next week we, we lift up the precious, the Holy Spirit who, who came mm. at Pentecost. The, the fire didn't come down from heaven to destroy, mm. but it, it worked it to purify us, mm. to give us that, that strength to go day by day, to do what Jesus says, walking those steps along that highway of holiness. Now, we're going to be... It's a, it's a challenging thing because that highway, you can't afford to take a wrong turn. It says, lest you be lame and fall off it 
and and then you have to get back up again start again mm. whereas he who begun a work good work within us shall complete it to the day of his coming see this is it and when I look at this in Hebrews 9 28 Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him we haven't already arrived so you can see the kingdom of God you can see it but we're looking for him now we're looking for his coming right now but that's something that we keep our eyes on Jesus otherwise if you get diverted off oh, you know we hear so much about things that are happening in the world today that, yeah. that oh, we went into the shops yesterday oh, I don't know about you but, but I get you know we are here because we value you and because stay 70 miles apart yeah, yeah. actually yeah. And I, yeah. I saw a sign on the way home that pointed to 1.5 kilometers to another place that was going to go now. I thought immediately I thought of, oh 1.5 meters oh. yeah it's the way they're training us but that's the way that that, that we we have to keep our eyes on Jesus because I'll tell you what the, the movement right now is for people uh, to be completely avalanched, completely swamped by the information that's being provided because we care for you. Yeah. We, we value your public health. Yeah. Now, one thing I've seen is that uh, Trump has brought out that they didn't care for the unborn babies. They, did, they saw that as an essential service to kill them. Yeah. But they didn't see the churches as, as being it's an essential essential. service. Uh, Jacinda Ardern did not see the importance of having unborn babies, even those that were born alive as a result of botched abortions. She didn't see the importance of that. She said, she came back and said, look, we, we're, we're into saving lives. Mm. And yet the other mm. side of it is she's killing yeah. the unborn. Yeah. And, uh, and that was, that's really they what's thought, being done. Mm. So we have to listen to the mixed messages for sure. And you can't, you're in a shop and you get this blasting through all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, we're in uh, Harris Scarfs. Mm. Okay, same thing. I thought, how many times did they need to tell you? Is it brainwashing? Right? Or something? Oh, new people coming in and out of the store. Mm. Oh, yeah, but goodness gracious. Yeah. Hmm. These people got the message now. Spam so many people. Oh, God. You don't know. There's something wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Tasers. <laughs> yeah. So, now, this then, you know, we're on the highway of holiness there. We've started off, and how can we, we ought to live? We live by faith in the promises. The next stage on is not so much getting born again. Some people want to get baptised again and again and again and oh, again. I know. I've seen that once. They want to get baptised. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so they think that by doing that, well, we've started off again. It's like they've slipped yeah. off the... That they've done something wrong mm. and uh, they can't go to confession because they're not Catholics, but they, they haven't understood the word because they don't understand 1 John 1, 9. Yeah, but if you confess your sins, you, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and uh, and, and really cleanse you from all of us. But this is not sort of like always going back to the beginning. It's not like uh, a game of Monopoly that says, you know, go to jail, do not pass go, do not collect 200. It's, uh, it, it's, we're on the highway. We need to move along. It's a bit like Pilgrim's Progress. On yeah. you, there's going to be times where you make wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. yeah. But God in his mercy and in his wisdom, and mm. he will correct. Yeah. And yes. there was some pain that they, yeah. that the Pilgrim and Faithful went through because they made wrong decisions. Mm. But the way we can move on solidly is in Ephesians. And this talks about the bride that God is sending Jesus back for. And this is what's happening 
on that highway of holiness. He's preparing his bride that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church. 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 Not churches. A glorious one body. One ecclesia. One one body that, that, that he is he died for. He loves the church. Christ loves the church. He died for it. And there are many who say that they are of the church when he will say to them, I never knew you. They'll say to me, Lord, 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 Lord. Lord. Uh, but, but who are you? He'll say, never knew you. Uh, you see, there's something about knowing God. Eternal life is knowing God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Knowing the Father. And that's how we start off on that roadway, that highway of holiness, where we see the kingdom of God, we see uh, the, the, and we come to know him through Jesus Christ. And he's going to present that church, glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. Mm. Holy and without... Again, it's that word holy, mm. that word hagios in the Greek, that word that, that means separated off. In other words, you're going to be separated off from a world that's totally filthy mm. and unclean. So we get a picture of how this is to be in practical terms. So I'm talking about practical holiness now. Oh. Ephesians 5, verses 1 to 11. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savour. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as becometh saints. And neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Mm-hmm. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So that's that's clear. It's very practical. It is, isn't it? It's saying, okay, well, now you can see the kingdom of God. Now make that your goal. So don't do any of these things that are going to try and divert you. Don't do any of these things. And uh, and it's it's a very precious walk. Walk as children of light. Jesus says very simply, very carefully, if you follow him, you will not walk in darkness, for you will have the light of life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what we have. And we've also had that, that revelation this last week with the, in relation to if you turn away from the light, you're going to be walking into darkness. Yeah. You're going to have a shadow. Yeah. And this is what's happening with the Jews. They have a shadow of the goodness of God when they're following the law. The law is only a shadow of the mm. things that are the real. So Jesus is sacrificed, but they still want to sacrifice the old way, using bullocks and goats and yeah. lambs. But that, that was only a shadow. Yeah. They would have to do that every day. But when Christ went into the Holy of Holies, then he did it once for all, so that we can now come boldly into the throne of grace. And so that we might find help in time of need. Mm. And that is on... It's, you're not going to get that except on the highway of holiness. Yeah. And that's a precious highway to be on. It's not sort of a set of rules. Mm. It's a set of, of, of 
desiring God more than anything. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's not like, well, I'm not going to commit adultery. Well, why would you want to do that? Mm. It's mm. This is not what God would want. No. So I'm going to want to do things that approved of Him yeah. and want to do the things that He loves. You know, it says that to really love God, you need to hate evil. Mm. And people say, well, oh, no, no, if you hate, then you're not loving. Mm. No, 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 no. If I hate evil, the things that God hates, mm. then I will have my heart open to the many things that he wants to fill me with, with his love. Yes. So love for the world is something... Hatred toward God, isn't it? It is, yeah, it's it is. that. But a genuine love for God will give us the love for the world that he had for the world. That we'll want to see them saved. And so we will use our word, use our actions, use the opportunities to share the things on a daily basis with people that we meet. Mm. And, and every person that, that we meet can see the light that shines in us. Mm. That's because God's grace. Because we're looking towards... a, a a place that we're going to pass through now, but we're going to eventually come to be there as He comes back for us, as His bride, as He's dealt with us, without spot and wrinkle, mm. because how do we do that? Through His Word every day. Mm. Through His Word. He comes to a place where He'll show us things that we need to know. Yeah. And who knows exactly how to teach us? Yeah. He knows what we can take each day. I mean, if, I, if I'm being a real pain in the neck to people, I mean, we, we, we had this thing from the Boxer Rebellion. This woman was totally, a, she was obnoxious with her family. She was very difficult to be, but God spoke to her about the things that he did in place in China. And she got a lot of things dealt with there. But she became a real solid lover of the things of God and led many people to the Lord. Mm -hmm. But in her early days, pain she in the neck. Mm -hmm. Totally strong. pain in the neck. But God dealt with her. Mm. <laughs> mm. I know. And mm. that young woman became such a powerful instrument in God's hands in China. Yeah. 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 And you, God, again. Sometimes mm. I've often wondered where someone has got such a strong will it's channeling it, isn't it, yeah. into right for the right Because you want them to be strong against that, yeah. Yeah. against the, the enemy. enemy. to have that strong yeah. will. Yeah. So you've got to have the strong will. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not so using it in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not, not using it in the right way. Yeah. 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 You have to channel it. Yeah. 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 But the way of holiness, mm. it's not someone telling you, like a pastor telling you, or me telling you, or anything mm. telling you, no, you can't do this, you can't do that. You've got to wear your hair in a certain way. Otherwise, mm. you're not being holy. Yeah. You've got to have hair. That's all there's on the tack on the men. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> it's Larissa's Larissa, Larissa's job to pick on you. <laughs> yeah. But you see, yeah, well God uses her, you see. <laughs> but, but the wonder of it all is that that God has each of us individually. Mm -hmm. He knows what place we're at and, and, and you know how we can really be. Uh, he sees our heart. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but this highway of holiness is inspiring. Mm -hmm. it, is. it is. It's something which uh, yeah. people, because the oh, holiness, that means no fun. No. Now, I think on this highway, there's going to be many, 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 many challenges. Like, I think, again, Pilgrim's Progress, they were looking towards the celestial city, mm -hmm. and that was their goal. And then there was a message went back to Christiana, and she wanted to move mm -hmm. there. And then you got Mercy that wants to move with Christiana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, it can grow from there. And uh, there was still the Vanity Fair. There's still the the challenges within those that didn't want to go along that path. And uh, you had Worldly that's Wise that, Man. That song, ACDC, you know. Highway to hell, you know. Yeah. I just think that's just wonderful. That's just hilarious. Mm. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. We. we uh, yeah. There's things we did as a, a, a preaching team when 
they had all these things out at the uh, festival centre, and uh, that. so we had a great time there with that. Uh, it was really good to be able to share the gospel with uh, with people that uh, really were quite extreme, uh, but were actually at, some of them will listen to what we had to say. They yeah. Mm. Mm. So I, I just want to encourage you that the first entrance into the the highway is to be born again. Mm. Mm. But Jesus has made it so that we can be through his blood that will cleanse us from all the guilt of the past. And when you're freed from the guilt of the past, there's, there's a sense of, well, now I can get moving. I don't have to be bogged down by all the things from the past. And you leave the things from the past behind mm, yeah. because you've got a big step forward to make. And if you, 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 your feeble knees and you've got weak hands, then you, it says, strengthen mm. the hands that hang down and the feeble, and you start to work and be healed so that in his word is healing, in his word is life. And uh, that's what we go. So that then we, we walk on that highway until the end. Mm-hmm. The world will contradict us and say, I oh, know there's nothing out there. There's nothing out there. It's, what's the good of being holy? What's the good of praying? Prayer doesn't matter. You know, no, but we need to enter into the holy place that God has got for us through the blood of Jesus, through the very sacrifice that he's done. And we can come into the very throne room of God. And uh, and with that we can have an intercession that he will give. And plead for us before the Father. Yeah. Oh, and that's going to be a wonderful day when he does come back. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. Wonderful day. Hallelujah. There's some scripture in Proverbs that ties in with that path of holiness. Yep. It's um, four. Proverbs 4 and from verse 25. Let thine eyes look straight straight on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left and remove thy foot from evil. Yes. See, so that just fits in, fits in perfectly. Of holiness. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. At the end of it, Ephesians there, it says too, you know, and it's Ephesians 5, it says, Wake up, O sleeper, rise yes. from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. That's right. Yeah. Oh.
Blessed Trinity.